Welcome to Black History Heroes. Today we will present a Black History podcast about Mary Elizabeth Bowser, a Black Union spy in the Confederate White House. The story of Mary Elizabeth Bowser is one of intrigue and espionage during the U.S. Civil War. She is among a number of Black women who served as spies for the Union. The most well-known is Harriet Tubman, who worked in South Carolina and in Florida as a scout and as a spy. Like much about Mary, her exact birth and date of death are shrouded in mystery. Many commentaries report that she was likely born in 1839 as Mary Elizabeth Richards. She was born in slavery on the plantation of John and Elizabeth Van Loo near Richmond, Virginia. John Van Loo was a wealthy hardware merchant. In 1851, when John Van Loo died, his widow Elizabeth freed Mary and all of the other enslaved Africans on the Van Loo plantation. A staunch abolitionist and Quaker, Elizabeth also purchased many of her former slaves' family members, owned by others. She would also free them in an effort to bring the families back together. Recognizing Mary's keen intelligence, Elizabeth sent her north to attend the Quaker School for Negroes in Philadelphia. After Mary graduated, she returned to Richmond and married Wilson Bowser a free black man, on April 16, 1861. This was only a few days before the U.S. Civil War began. The couple settled near Richmond and Mary maintained a close relationship with Elizabeth. A Southern lady, Elizabeth had earned quite a reputation for her sympathies. Dubbed Crazy Bat, she encouraged this persona to cover the very serious espionage work for the Union when the Civil War began. She organized an intricate spy operation in support of the Union by using her resources and her connections in the Confederate capital. It is said that her mansion was outfitted with many secret doors that led to secret rooms that became a safe haven for African fugitives who also supplied Elizabeth with information that she transcribed into cipher codes sent to Union officers, which included uh, General Ulysses S. Grant. Elizabeth's operation became so sophisticated that she planned to send a spy to the White House of Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy. Mary Elizabeth Bowser, An able actress like Elizabeth herself would become Ellen Bond, a dull-witted but able servant for the White House of the Confederacy. Once settled in Davis's home, Mary played her role well. She pretended to be slow thinking. No one suspected that she could read, for this would have been illegal within the Confederate States. Mary read warfare dispatches as she cleaned the house. She listened keenly to the conversations of the Confederate men as she served them meals. These military communications would be relayed back to the Van Loo mansion. Elizabeth coded information, which was placed inside of false eggs or printed on dress patterns to be passed to her network of union agents. Jefferson Davis eventually began to suspect that there was a leak. The Union was learning entirely too much, as the most secret communications of the Cabinet were divulged. In the last days of the war, suspicion fell on Mary, and she fled from the Davises' house in January of 1865. Her last act for the Union was an attempt to burn down the Confederate White House but this was unsuccessful. Even after the war, Elizabeth never revealed Mary's espionage work. We know about this information today from others, such as Thomas McNiven, another Union spy in Richmond who was a baker. The Thomas McNiven papers report that Mary, quote, was working right in the Davis home and had a photographic mind. 
everything she saw on rebel president's desk, she could repeat word for word. Unlike most colored, she could read and write. She made a point of always coming out to my wagon when I made deliveries at the Davis's home to drop information, end quote. After the Civil War ended, the U.S. federal government destroyed its records related to Southern spies during Reconstruction to protect their lives. There was, however, a journal known to have been written by Bowser herself. It is said to have chronicled her wartime work, but the journal was lost by the Bowser family around 1952. There is no record of Bowser's life after the war. There is no exact date known regarding her death. In 1995, the U.S. government honored the service of Mary Elizabeth Bowser by inducting her in the Military Intelligence Corps Hall of Fame. Today, We can only thank Mary and other women like her for all they did for freedom. And that is our podcast for today. Mary Elizabeth Bowser, a black woman spy in the Confederate White House. To learn more about black history, figures like Ms. Bowser, visit www.blackhistoryheroes.com.